I think it's safe to say that Juno is a cultural touchstone of the 2000s. The film, released in 2007 under Searchlight Pictures, a subsidiary of Fox at the time, who focused on producing independent films and giving them wider releases. They had a string of successes in the 2000s with films like Napoleon Dynamite, Little Miss Sunshine, and 500 Days of Summer, and sandwiched between all those was Juno. Now, I personally was born just a little bit too early for Juno, so I didn't see the film when it first came out. I barely knew anything about it beyond the iconography of Sunny D and Bleecker's track outfit. I didn't see the film myself until 2014, and the only reason I watched it is because my girlfriend at the time was head over heels for it. While I can honestly say I really enjoyed it and found it charming, it didn't really leave much of an impression on me beyond that, but for whatever reason, Juno climbed its way back into the forefront of my mind over the course of the past year. I really wondered how well the film had aged and whether or not it could still resonate today or whether we should just leave it as a relic of its time, whether or not it was even worth remembering. So I rewatched the film and now I feel like I can confidently say that, yeah, it is worth remembering and I'm shocked that people don't talk about it more. Now, I will admit, the first 10 minutes or so had me worried that this film aged like milk, like the amount of quirkiness right off the bat hits with the force of a frying pan to the head. And to be fair, this film was a part of the era of independent filmmaking that helped define the aesthetics and overall feeling often associated with the words indie film, you know? Films about strange characters from small town America who have oddly specific tastes in music. So a certain level of quirkiness is to be expected going into a film like this, and I feel like giving it a bit of a break might be warranted considering how seminal it was for its time. I loved the music choice, and I didn't mind the graphics in the opening credits. It was just that every time characters started talking, the dialogue was outlandish and immediately off-putting. This is one doodle that can't be undid, Holmes Gillett. What? Honest blog? I've taken like three pregnancy tests and I am for shiz up the spot. I'm not sure if I just settled in more as things moved along or what, but thankfully this gets ironed out pretty quickly as the plot gets going. In fact, it's weird to think that those first 10 minutes are even a part of the film at all, given how great the filmmaking is otherwise. The directing is confident, featuring sweeping shots, some longer takes, and some clever visual storytelling that I'll talk about later. All this on top of the naturalistic and often warm cinematography makes the world of the film feel both both unique and immersive, it makes complete sense to me why people would find this world so captivating, especially when it released. A lot like the cinematography, the performances here feel very natural across the board. Everybody just sort of slips into their characters, regardless of some of the more recognizable faces in the cast. But of course, the standout performance comes from Elliot Page as Juno. In a recent interview, Elliot Page talked about how the height of his Juno fame was a particularly dysphoric time for him, which I I literally cannot begin to comprehend what feelings he probably harbors for Juno given what was going on in his life at the time, and just for the plain fact that Juno was his breakout role, especially given the film's subject matter. But I think knowing that is really just a testament to how good his performance is. Outside of Juno's clothing, which I now know is just stuff that Elliot Page mostly picked out from secondhand stores, thanks to that recent interview I just referenced, it's hard to tell how much of Juno as a character is written or ad-libbed, how much the character is performed or authentic, and I don't think there's a higher compliment you could give an actor than that. Especially since a character like Juno is really easy to make unlikable. She's extremely witty and almost never takes her situation as seriously as she probably should. But I think this is an example of that kind of character done right. Juno is portrayed with a lot more nuance than this type of character usually gets. Her wittiness isn't purely utilized for humor, it's also very revealing. There are scenes where she's cracking funny jokes for the sake of the audience, but in some scenes, it gives us a glimpse into how naive she is, and in others, it shows how this wit is often used as a coping mechanism, how it abruptly appears in tense moments so she doesn't have to dwell on negative feelings, and how she uses it as a veneer so she doesn't have to be 
emotionally honest with the people she cares about. This nuance made it very easy for me to get emotionally invested in Juno, and again, a lot of this is due to the performance, but I think this subtle nuance is present in every aspect of the film and the way it tells its story. Much like Juno's character, it's easy to picture how the entire concept of telling a story about a pregnant 16-year-old could go horribly wrong, especially in the 2000s. Hell, we'd only have to wait two years after Juno's release to see just how bad that could get with things like MTV's 16 and Pregnant and its spin-off Teen Mom. I think the absolute highest praise I can give this movie is that it is restrained. It is a simple, lighthearted, and widely appealing story that doesn't ham up its subject matter to try and pry out every last drop of emotion it can from its audience. It is much more methodical and, like I said, subtle. But that doesn't mean the film is devoid of substance. The film is simple, but deceptively so. In fact, not only does this film have some genuinely emotionally impactful moments, but I think it manages to give a lot of poignant commentary on the subject of teen pregnancy through visuals and implication alone. Stuff like Juno's beat up van juxtaposed against wealthy suburban houses, or her interaction with a rude clinic employee and the deafening sounds of anxious ticks all around her, or a shot of her walking through a crowd which, when first shown, displays that Juno is struggling to get through, it's very claustrophobic, and later that shot gets repeated when she's eight months pregnant, showing her parting a sea of people. Or stuff like the adoptive father's slow change of wardrobe throughout the film, or a horrible conversation between said adoptive father and Juno that has some really dark implications and allows the audience to imagine how much worse it could possibly get if no one intervenes, which is so tense and powerful. The fact that the film manages to balance heavy themes without sacrificing its fun and good-natured tone really speaks to how well done this film truly is, and I think the glue that tonally holds these puzzle pieces together is the soundtrack. What else is there really to say about Juno's soundtrack? It's an excellent selection of songs which are utilized to near perfection. The songs capture the essence of the film so well that you really can't picture the film without them. There's a reason why this soundtrack was so massively successful, even beyond the immediate popularity of the film, and that's because it's just so damn good. If I had any major complaints about Juno, it would be those clunky and downright embarrassing first 10 minutes of dialogue, and the fact that we never really get to know much about the adoptive mother as a character. She's very integral to the story's ending in a way that I won't spoil here, but given where she ultimately ends up, it would have been nice to know something about her other than that she desperately wants to be a mom. With how well the film handles characterization in other areas, it sticks out like a sore thumb that a character this important feels so one note. But overall, I cannot stress enough how easily this film could have come out shallow, blunt, manipulative, stigmatizing, and or overly dramatized, and how big of an achievement it is that this film came out as good as it did and aged as well as it did. And like I said, not everything aged well. There's some some questionable moments here and there, but overall, it's a charming and emotional film that manages to say a lot with a little. I can definitely say that I still didn't find it life-changing, and that's probably because I'm not a pregnant teen, so depending on who you are, you might get a ton more out of this than I did, but still, I feel like I've gained a newfound appreciation of the film upon this watch, and I'd easily recommend it to just about anyone. If you somehow avoided it until now, definitely give it a try. At least at the time of this recording, it is available to watch on Amazon Prime, so please definitely go check it out. And even if you have seen it, if it's been a while, now is the time to revisit it because it is absolutely worth remembering.